Hello everyone, welcome to Downtown Tailoring. In today's video, I'm gonna empower you to make a regal cone circular skirt. So let's go. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe. It helps grow the channel and it helps me make more videos for you. I'm gonna need a red carpet for this special lady. She's my new mannequin and we are going to make the skirt for her. Her waist is 13 inches and a half, but she's a half scale mannequin. So in a full scale, she will be 27. And then if you are gonna make this skirt, measure the total length with the shoes on. And I like to add two inches, just in case. <laughs> So I measured the length and I converted to the full scale and centimeters just in case. And then I'm putting like a, just a circle around how wide I want it. And I measured that, but you don't need that measurement if you do it in another way, but I'm just putting there so you can see. And then I'm going to make another measurement, which is the length with the projection. And now that I have all my measurements, I can make my pattern. We are going to take as base the circular skirt that we are going to divide by eight, one for each cones. You can do 12 cones, 16, as many as you want. We are going to start by tracing a line of 45 inches and a half, which is the length of the skirt. My second line is the waist. I'll divide the waist by eight. And because I have decimals and I don't like to work with decimal when I'm working in the imperial system in inches, let me show you what I do. I take my waist measurement, which is 27 and divide it by two, 13 and a half. And then I divide it by two again. So 13 and a half will be the half. Again, it's one fourth. And then I divide it again and it's one eighth. And that way I have it easier to visualize. So I have three inches and three eight, and I will project this half of it at each side. And then I will have this small line there. When you see it, you see the small, but remember it's one eighth of the skirt. Next, we are going to find the center of the circle. The waist is a circle and we are going to find the center and the radius. To do that, we are going to use the school formula. We are going to divide the 27 inches waist by two pi, which is 4.3. So we are going to extend the center line by 4.3 and we are going to find this radius. So it's 4.3 inches and I will project that at the center. And remember that you always can come back to the formula, just screenshot and you will be okay. Now I found the center of my circle. From this point of the radius, we are gonna make a line passing through the edge of the waist. And then from the waist, we are gonna mark the length 45 inches and a half. And now we have one eighth of the skirt if the skirt were circular. If you got confused with the radius and blah, 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 you just have to take the measurement all around and divide it by eight. And use this measurement for the width of the skirt at the bottom. For example, in our case, we measure 140 inches and divided by eight is 17 and a half and our skirt has 19 inches, so it's close enough but we are not making a circular skirt, we are making cones. And for making the cones, we have to extend the length of the center around 10% of the original length. So if the original length was 45 inches and a half, we are going to extend four inches and five eighth. And then we are going to get a new arc at the bottom. Our skirt will have kind of scallops look. And if you want, you can make it bigger or smaller. It doesn't really matter. It's your skirt, it's your design. And if you were wondering why you need to let the 10%, I'm going to leave this one for you. You can take a screenshot and this is the explanation, but I don't wanna waste time with that. We are almost done and the waist, you can mark it in two ways. 
the regular is curving up, but you can mark it curving down and that will make the cone flare out more. And then another thing you can do, if you like, is to reduce for about seven inches. You can reduce the width of the skirt. That way the skirt is more stylized, it more to the body of the people. People really appreciate that. And this is the final draft. On my brick and mortar pattern, I do it a little bit different. Now I am ironing a little bit because it curves too much. And I just cut half of it and then I fold it in the center before cutting the other half. That will give me a perfectly symmetrical pattern. This is how it look the pattern. And now it's time to cut it. This is the material I have. You can use it both sides. Uh, now I'm going to put it in the wrong side. What will be for me the wrong side? And I'm checking all the pattern. I realize the direction of the pattern goes in one way only. So we always have to cut the material in just one way. And uh, I choose what I found that it was very nice. I marked my pattern and I left the seam allowance. And now, because we are talking about eight pieces, now I will gonna measure my second. And uh, remember, we have matched before. Here, the match doesn't have to be 100%, but have to be very accurately. And uh, now that I have my first two pieces, I'm going to find the third and fourth. And for that, I'm just trying to see because I don't want to match the eight pieces because I think it will be a little bit boring. I will make fourth and fourth. So it will be one, 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 one. If all the pieces were the same, it will look a little bit boring. So I'm just trying to match and find a nice that goes with the first one. And here you go, you see, I think it will look much better this way. I'm cutting one by one my pieces. And the last one, which is the center back, I will cut it open at the center to put the zipper or the opening of the dress. But you really don't need to do it. You can put the zipper in one of the separation. It doesn't really matter. But I wanted to do it this way just to make it more regular for you. After that, I'm going to use this fusible cotton interfacing. I should have used, I don't know, something that is non-fusible and so on. But uh, today I feel kind of lazy. No, it's because of the show of today. You can use the fusible, but uh, not all the materials will be very well fused with this, including the one I'm using. But because my pieces are small and this is just uh, for the video, I'm still using it. And most of the material like a polyswa or some brocade that you are going to use with this skirt are all fusible. So, you know, let's... Um... I'm cutting this piece, as you can see, one top, one going at the bottom, and you really don't waste too much material. In the other case, I waste material because I was looking for the pattern, and I was cutting one by one, but in this case, I cut all together four and four, and that's it. And if you are using the same pattern, you should reduce a little bit of the sides because it's supposed to be a little bit smaller than your piece. In fact, you shouldn't even sew on it, but I feel more comfortable if I sew on it. But the correct way, the real correct way is make it as smaller as the seam allowance. Now I'm going to glue it. And for that, I am ironing my pieces. These are the last pieces of a roll. I found this fabric at $5 per meter because it was the last of the roll. And this is why it's so wrinkly. But it's okay. I am putting my interfacing and the way I do it, I start from the center and goes to the sides. All my pieces are done. I have my eight pieces. In fact, nine because the center back is two. And then I will put it in place. I like to just present it and to put it one beside the other because it's easier for me to recognize them and so on then. So I make kind of circle with all the pieces, the way that they are going to be in the skirt. And I can sew. I look for my thread 
and I think I will need a lot of thread, so I'm preparing two bobbins. So as I said before, I'm preparing my machine and I will start by sewing the center back. And you know, this one, I should match the pattern. Today, I'm not trying to match it perfectly because this is just a try on. And I'm just presenting my two pieces and checking and pinning. And I know that won't be perfect, but if it's good enough, we will leave it like that for today. And when we start sewing that, we have to start sewing around seven inches to nine inches below because we have to leave the opening for the zipper. And you see, not bad. So I'm going to take the two next pieces and I'm going to put one in one side and the other in one side. I will pin it and then I will sew. And then I will go and do the same all the time. And that way guarantee me that I don't get confused with the pieces. Believe me, we always get confused with the pieces. No matter how different they are, but being those pieces the same is very confusing. So this is what I have now. I have three pieces and I will take two more and I will keep going. That reminds me that one day I did a skirt like that with pieces for a customer and the seamstress, I caught it and the seamstress forgot two pieces and the skirt was so small and the customer was like, oh, I wish to be this size. <laughs> oh, well, she didn't like it, but I found it funny. Now I'm going to make my last piece and for that I will pin first one side and then the other and my skirt will be basically done. In Spanish, this skirt is called falda de gajos because it resembles the pieces of the orange. I'm going to hang my skirt. I honestly don't have the luxury of time. I will hang it just for one day but it's good to hang it for at least one week. And now is the time to finish it. I'm going to use pinking shears for the sides so it looks more like handmade. Probably I will use searcher because for some reason people prefer it. And for the drama, I'll use horsehair braid for the hem. Who doesn't like drama? Please raise your hand if you like drama. Sorry. Okay, just in sewing. So I use my horse hair is two inches, which represent four inches in the regular scale. And the horse hair give to the hem a body and the skirt looks more luxurious and nice. When the hem is done, you will do a waistband if it's a skirt or you are going to sew it to the bodies if it's a dress. I am preparing a little bit of draping here to make a kind of dressy, but it's not real address, just to show. And here you go, here she is. This is my new mannequin, and I'm looking for a name. Please help me find a name for her. Look at the pattern. You can see it clearly why I choose more than one pattern. Look at the hem. I did a twirl before, and I use it as a crinoline petite coat, but this is not really very well done. But if you want me to do one, please, spam the comment because that takes a lot of resources for me to do it and I really need to know if this is something that you really will benefit from. You can make a wedding gown exactly with the same concept just the train a little bit longer at the back. And guys that was all for today. If you like this video please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe, comment, share. Bye!